This is a rare afternoon where I don't have an absolute mound of schoolwork to do, so I get a chance to make a video. And I was going to spend it making a World Cup prediction video, but then MLS and Liga MX released the Leaks Cup format for next season, and I am mad. If you are a longtime follower of my channel, you will know that three years ago I made a rant about the League's Cup. Back after it had just gone through its first iteration and it was literally just four MLS teams versus four Liga MX teams with plans to expand to eight versus eight for the next season. And back then, even when it was a pretty non-intrusive tournament for the majority of the league, I still didn't like it. And now with this new format, my feelings have done a lot of things. Change is not not one of them. So, the new League's Cup is a full all of MLS versus all of Liga MX tournament. All teams from both leagues playing against each other, the top team in each league from the previous season getting a bye to the round of 32 knockout stage, all the remaining teams, 45 of them, being separated into groups of three with the top two teams from each group moving on. Two games per group, and then round of 32, round of 16, et cetera, et cetera. You know, regional tournament, that's the way CONCACAF's going with the Central American Regional Tournament and the Caribbean Regional Tournament to qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League, right? Except for the League's Cup, they are completely disrupting the Major League Soccer season to do it. This tournament is going to take place from late July, starting July 21st next season, to late August. It's going to take up four weeks of the MLS season, and for some genius idea, they are pausing the MLS season during it. So, you know, halfway through the MLS regular season, a little more than halfway through the MLS regular season, we're just going to have a month of nothing. That's it. No MLS soccer as we play this League's Cup tournament, which is all in all less important than the Major League Soccer season, less important than the CONCACAF Champions League. It's kind of just stopping for a two-league cup tournament for no real reason. Oh, but we get to see who the best team from Liga MX and MLS is this way, you say. No, because for another genius idea, every single game is being hosted by Major League Soccer clubs. That's right, for the whole tournament, the Liga MX will be on the road. So, I mean, can't really compare the two leagues, if that's what the goal of this tournament is, if you never play in the home stadiums of one of the leagues. Just makes it even more useless. It doesn't prove a metric for anything because you're giving one league home team advantage the whole way through. And so the results aren't an accurate representation of which of the two leagues is the best. That's what the CONCACAF Champions League is, because the CONCACAF Champions League, you get home and away legs, so both teams get a chance at home. And we saw with the MLS teams that have gone to the finals of the CONCACAF Champions League, how difficult those away legs are. And we've seen time and time again through the CONCACAF Champions League how much more difficult those away legs are compared to home legs when playing against Liga MX teams. So basically for MLS, you're getting Liga MX on easy mode by getting to play them all at home. And now we all know the reason why they're doing this. The reason why they're doing this, this is to make a bunch of money. They're doing this to make a bunch of money by having all the Mexican fans in America who typically don't care about MLS go to watch these games because Liga MX teams come by. We see it all the time with Liga MX teams playing friendlies, the Campions Cup. The CONCACAF Champions League sells very well amongst the Mexican fans in the US when they get to see their teams play. And we get regular friendlies between the two and this summer, especially, we see had, you know, League's Cup showcases where it's just friendly games of League MX teams versus MLS teams just, you know, scattered usually during the international breaks and they sell quite well. Mexican fans like their Mexican teams and want to see them live, but a lot of them are living in the United States and so that's not possible unless you bring the Mexican teams to them, which is what this League's Cup is. The problem is you have to pause the MLS season for this tournament and from a Canadian perspective that is just absolutely atrocious because first off, in Canada, we don't have the large amounts of Mexican fans who are jumping at the bit to watch Liga MX teams play. For example, the 2018 Campions Cup, which is the first edition of that cup game at BMO Field in Toronto, had less than 15,000 fans in attendance. That's less than half of BMO Field and significantly less than the average regular season game that TFC played that season. Because the average Canadian fan doesn't care about games that aren't as important as the regular MLS games, and there's no large influx of Mexican fans to offset that loss. So for the Canadian teams financially, it's not really a big sensical thing. But also, and this isn't just for the Canadian teams, this is for the 
northern MLS teams in general, like Minnesota, the New York teams, whatever, there are very few months in the year where you can play soccer, play football, and have it be nice and comfortable outside. The summer is short in Canada. The MLS regular season runs from the end of February to the beginning of October right now. February, March, April, not really ideal go see a soccer game weather in Canada. TFC, Montreal don't sell very well in home games at that time. May, things start to get a little bit better, but then they really fully pick up around June, July, August. And now we are going, taking the August out of the equation. That's four weeks in the middle of the summer, which again, not a long summer in Toronto or in Montreal, where all of a sudden now, no MLS soccer. I mean, oh, you can host League's Cup games, but based off of this last season, TFC is not going to host both of their games in the group stage, which means that they're only going to get one League's Cup game and then knockout stage, who knows? So really, you're only getting one guaranteed home game over a four-week period of prime soccer viewing season. That is absolutely atrocious. And it's just going to lower the hype around soccer in these cities. And it's going to lower the hype around the MLS teams, especially in these northern places where, you know, you're building up, you're building up, you're building up, the weather gets nicer, the weather gets nicer, the weather gets nicer, and then you stop when the weather's the nicest it is. And then you start back up at the end of August, just get a couple weeks of good weather, and then the weather starts getting worse again. So it's like, why? What's what's the point? What's the point if you're taking out the like best time of the year to go watch soccer games? It's, it's just it's absolutely ridiculous. Not to mention the month-long break while you're still playing games in the schedule just completely derails everything. And like for the casual fan, that's going to be incredibly hard to follow. You know, you're you know seeing when TFC's playing whatever, and then all of a sudden they're not playing in MLS, but they're playing some other thing. Like the casual North American sports fan doesn't know about the intermixing of soccer leagues. They just know like NBA, they played in the NBA. NHL, they play in the NHL. NFL, they play in the NFL. They don't understand why are you stopping but playing, but you're playing something else, but you stop the regulars. That, that's just gonna confuse the casuals. And so it's all about the money, as it always has been for MLS. But this is just proof that even Major League Soccer does not care about Major League Soccer. Like, you would think that for Major League Soccer, the number one priority for you would be the Major League Soccer season. But because of this whole, you're pausing, it's very obviously not. Major League Soccer is prioritizing the money that comes from having Mexican fans watching the Mexican teams play against the Major League Soccer teams. And what it is, is it's the league giving a giant middle finger to all the fans who are fans of Major League Soccer. This tournament isn't for people who are fans of Major League Soccer. This tournament isn't for people who are fans of the individual teams of Major League Soccer. This, this tournament is a showcase of Liga MX teams in the United States. It's for Liga MX fans, it's for Mexican fans, it's not for MLS fans. And in the end, it's the MLS season that is the one that has to suffer for it to occur. And if it was just a one year thing, you know, whatever, one year cool tournament, that would be fine. It's every single year, this is forever. In until they decide it's a bad idea, the MLS season pauses for a month in the middle of the regular season. And not just for a month sometimes, every two years, next season included, it's the Gold Cup from late June to mid-July. So next season, late June to mid-July, Gold Cup, and then a week later, League's Cup. How, how are you just gonna stop? You can't just stop the Major League Soccer season for two months in the summer. You can just stop, you can just take mid-June to mid-August out of the Major League Soccer schedule. Literally, like half the teams in the league lose most of their good weather games if that occurs. So they're, they're gonna have to compensate for it by playing through the Gold Cup. And that creates all these other problems because like I typically don't have a lot of interest when MLS is playing through the Gold Cup because I know the best guys aren't there. Like, why would you go to a Toronto FC game if you know Richie Larea, Jonathan Azorio, Michael Bradley when he was good, 
aren't going to be there. You're taking out half the starting 11 for a lot of these teams and saying, oh, but go still watch the game. It's just going to be like a two-month period in the summer of the best time to watch football of first month, mid-June to mid-July. You can go watch MLS games, but like your favorite players aren't going to be there. And then the second half is you can't watch MLS games. Maybe you can watch a League's Cup game in your city if you're lucky. Do you even care about the League's Cup? Probably not. It's not as important as MLS. Less Champions League spots on the line, it doesn't really mean anything because you can't say, oh, we're the best team in North America. That's what the CONCACAF Champions League's for. And the CONCACAF Champions League, you play home and away. It's better. That's all my points. If that was nonsensical, a lot of nonsensical points, I'm sorry, it was a rant. I'm upset by this. I don't care about the League's Cup. I'm not going to watch the League's Cup. It's, it's just disruptive. It's disruptive and... You know, maybe in the U.S. it's going to be a success. Maybe in the U.S. it'll get eyeballs on to MLS teams from fans who are fans of Liga MX. But in Canada, there's not a Liga MX contingent that are now going to be huge eyeballs on MLS because of this. So this is, for the Canadian teams particularly, this is destructive. Again, it shows MLS doesn't care about MLS. And this is the issue with the franchise system in Major League Soccer is you don't have to do things that make all the teams money. The league has to make money, and then because it's a centralized system, all the teams make money. So if the league makes money, the teams make money. The League's Cup itself, probably going to be bad for a lot of teams in the league, especially the ones that get eliminated early. But in the end, they're all going to get a nice check at the end of the day from MLS saying, here's how much money we made. And the whole league makes that money and gets dispersed. This wouldn't happen in the club system. This, this is Americanization of soccer at its absolute worst. And it's, you know, it's going to make them a lot of money. And it's going to keep going. But for building a fan base in Toronto, building a fan base in Montreal, building a fan base in Vancouver, building a fan base in the Canadian portion of the teams at the very least, it's, dis it's destructive. It's going to be destructive. Thank God the CPL runs because like two months of maybe two games in Toronto where you're going to get your best 11 guys playing. It's ridiculous.